Welcome back, YouTubers. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos. Today we're going to be talking about Mark of the Beast and how it came about and what it means and where we go and, and all that. But before we can talk about the Mark of the Beast, we have to understand what the people of Israel were taught from the beginning. And then how the devil would go and have this war with God. Lucifer is trying to eliminate God the Father from our lives and from the world that we see today. If you go out today and look around and you try to find any place that worships God the Father the way it was taught in the very beginning, you see that Lucifer has accomplished his goal. And there is no more worshiping of God the Father anywhere on earth. But <clears throat> to go back, this is how it was. And God spoke, uh, chapter 20 of Exodus says, God spoke all these words. Verse 1. This is what came to be the word of God. Because that's what Moses kept reminding the people. You heard God's words. You heard the word of God. This is the word of God. And it came to be God's word. And this is what was taught. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the house, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall not have any other gods before me. The only God that was allowed to be worshipped was God the Father. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth, in the earth beneath, or, or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That means if you're not keeping these and you're not doing it this way, you hate God. Now, those are not my words. Those are from the God the Father. So don't go around, you know, unsubscribing because I'm teaching you what was taught, what we need to accept. <clears throat> Number eight, and showing mercy. Unto them, unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. See, mercy and grace go together. And it says that God shows mercy unto them that keep his commandments. It's in God's commandments. I didn't say that. God says that. So if you want to say, well, I don't have to do those things and I'm going to get mercy and grace... Okay, I'm not going to argue with you, but I'm just telling you what God says. Okay? All right. Number eight. It says, remember, because God knew you were going to forget and you were going to go off and start doing other stuff because your friends are doing it, because your mom taught you that way. But God said, remember, don't forget to keep the Sabbath day holy. Six days sh shall thou work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, nor anybody in your house. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. For the Lord blessed the seventh day and made it holy. See, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, is holy unto God. That's how God's people were taught from the very beginning. Okay? Pertains to God. Now we go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. And there was a dream that was given unto the pagan Nebuchadnezzar. 
And this was going to tell about all the people that were going to rule over Israel, the paganism, because each rule had different gods. And these were put upon Israel, and it started to change a lot of the people and how they worshipped. Okay. So, chapter 2, in verse 31, it says, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image head was of fine gold and brass, and his arms of silver, the belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay. Thou sawest till a stone was cut without hands, which smote the image upon thy feet that were of iron and clay, and break them into pieces. Then this, then was the iron and clay, brass, silver, and gold broken into pieces, and became like the shaft of the summer threshold, thresh floors, and the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them, and the, and smote the image, became a great mountain, filled the whole earth. Now this is the interpretation of the dream. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowls of heaven, has he given into thy hand, and has made thee ruler over them all. You are this head of gold. <clears throat> then it talks about... Um, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And a fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much, for as, much as iron breaketh into pieces and, and subdues all things, as iron breaketh, all these shall break into pieces and bruise. Whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of part of clay, and pot of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest iron mixed with murky clay. The last kingdom is going to be from the same place, but it's going to have two different type of rule. One is iron and one is clay. And we're going to explain the iron and clay in Jesus' time the rule over his people was Rome. But we're going to see, we're going to get to that. And we're going to establish what we're saying. So the second kingdom is uh, in chapter 5 of Daniel. And it says, Thy kingdom is divided and given into the Medes Persians. The Medes Persians is the second kingdom of silver arms and breasts. That's the second kingdom. They were uh, of a different type of worship. They worshiped different gods. So, first of all, you have Babylon that worshiped a different god, and they put those beliefs upon the people of Israel and started changing them from what they were taught from the very beginning. Worship one god, God the Father. Now, these kingdoms are... are forcing them and killing them to to worship something different. Now, the third kingdom, we have to go to the first book of Maccabees. This is history. And Alexander the Great conquered the Medes Persians. That's in chapter 1, verse 1. That's what it says. So the third kingdom is Greece. They worship Zeus, Poseidon, Isis, etc., etc., etc. So then they push their gods on the house of Israel. So, and as they're being born and born and born, they start looking at the way they're worshiping, and people start to assume and change into worshiping whatever rule is upon them at the time. Now, the fourth kingdom which is the one of iron and clay. It's in chapter 8 in the first book of Maccabees. And it's the Romans. And, and, and nobody conquered Greece. 
Alexander the Great died, and then the four generals divided the land, and one of them became strong, which was Rome, became Rome. Okay, And now Judas heard of the fame of the Romans, and they were very strong and were well disposed towards all those who made an alliance with them, and they pledged friendship. Rome was the last entity, or is the last entity, to rule the world. They ruled the world in those days with the sword, the iron sword. That's why we have iron in the dream of Nebuchadnezzar. But the Roman Empire fell within itself, spread itself out too thin, and wasn't able to defend itself, and it fell. But it still has the rule of clay, okay? Still has the rule of clay, even today. And so we go. In chapter 17 of Revelations, it says, And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abomination and filthiness of her fornications. And upon her head was a name written, Mystery Babylon, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth. Remember, this has to do with worship. The mother of harlots, meaning many religions will come out of her and preach and practice like her, but they will have a different name. But they still fall under the abomination of God. Why? Because it doesn't comply with the original teachings of God as we started out from the beginning. They do not worship on Sabbath. They do not worship God the Father. And many of these have images that they want you to bow down and worship. In verse nine of chapter 17, and here is a mind which has wisdom Seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. The only city in the world that sits in the middle of seven hills is Rome. So this mother of harlots is Rome. And every religion that practices like Rome, Rome used to worship the sun god on Sunday and push that to the whole world, continues to push that to the whole world, even today. In chapter 13, verse four, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? See, the beast, is a religious system. It has to deal with worship. Then you have verse 16, 17, and 18. And he caused both all, and he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell, save thee he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom, let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of the man, and his number is 666. It's a mark that in your right hand that God sees from heaven. It's not a mark that's a literal mark. It's a way you live. 
is what God sees. God wants you to worship as originally, not as as we see the world doing today, practicing today. The reason that there's no man may buy or sell unless he has the mark of the beast. Okay. We have to go to Nehemiah chapter 10. And it says, now those that sealed were Nehemiah, and then he names all the priests. Okay. With God's seal. You don't have God sealed, then you have the mark of the beast. It's either one or the other. You, there's nobody that doesn't have a seal. Everybody has one, and only God can see it from heaven. <clears throat> and starting in verse 28, now remember, this is how God's people were sealed with the seal of God. And the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nithiums, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the land unto the law of God, their wives and sons and their daughters, everyone having knowledge and having understanding, they clave to their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and into a note to walk in God's laws which was given by Moses, the servant of God, to observe and to do all the commandments of the Lord our God and judgments and his statutes. And they, and that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. And if the people of the land would bring ware or victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it from them on the Sabbath or on any holy day and that we would leave the seventh year and ex exaction, uh, exaction of every debt. The mark of sin is if you buy or sell on the Sabbath day. And in Nehemiah chapter 13, Verse, starting on verse 15 through 21. In those days I saw in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and laid in asses and all the wine presses, grapes, figs, and all the number of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. There dwelt men of Tyre therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah in Jerusalem. And I contended with the nobles of Judah, and said unto them, What evil thing is this that you do? Ye profane the Sabbath day. Did not our fathers thus, and did not our God bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath? And Nehemiah stopped that. Buying or selling on the Sabbath day gives you the mark of sin. Praying and worshiping any other God other than God the Father brings you the mark of sin. It started, it didn't start in, in Rome, but it started in Babylon that they uh, had different gods and they were uh, made the house of Israel uh, worship those gods and it continued throughout time. And this is the mark of the beast. We have to go back to what was taught in the very beginning. Remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. This is God made it holy. That day is holy. The time of the week that's holy is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. God made it for us. Day of rest. 
He did not say keep one in seven. Don't let anybody tell you that. He said the seventh day. The sin is breaking the commandments of law. Sin is the mark of the beast. God says that if you buy or sell on the Sabbath, you sin. The, the penalty for sin is death. <clears throat> so remember, my friends, keep the Sabbath day holy. Keep the commandments of God. Repent. Shalom.